Guy, my bastard. Glad I recorded that. <laughs> All right. So today is pretty simple. Today's pretty simple. I just want to wrap up. If you guys have any questions on goodness of fit testing, which is multiple proportions, multiple proportions, which has something to do with your take home. Wink, wink. Has something to do with it. Yeah, just write down wink, wink, goth. Take home exam. I don't actually tell you which tests to run on the take home. I'm winking. What's your turn that? <laughs> that's perhaps. Yeah. Although it's a little more generous. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my right eye came with my left eye. So anyway, that's it. The, the take home exam does not cover, if you will, the entire five tests that will be on next week's. And next week, my plan is for your in-class exam. You, you've done essentially five, you have you will have done by today five different types of hypothesis tests. A T test for match pairs, two independent proportions. Two independent, we'll, we'll, we'll run this down later, guys. I'll describe it down right now. Okay. Match pair for t-test, two independent t's, two independent z's, three proportions, which is goodness of fit, three or more, and then three or more averages, which is what we're going to talk about today. That's really those five. So on next week's exam, my, my goal is essentially to have the whole exam be one of each of those mixed together. So you have five different data sets, and that's why on Thursday, all we're going to do on Thursday is I'm going to bring a sample example of that where you've got five different data sets, one of each test, and you're going to just slug through with each other or individually, then we'll regroup together and, and, and do the entire thing. So, I mean, that's, that's all I have in store for Thursday and also for the, the in-class exam next week. The out-of-class is a lot more, is a lot more lenient. Like pretty much the entire exam is analyzing that 25 question multiple choice that I took on Friday in my CPR class, which is predominantly goth, except for that one little test I had to invent. But I love the test that I invented because you're still interpreting a p-value. Right? You're still, you're still, if you walk out of this class with nothing more than an understanding of what a p-value is, I am stoked. And so is Rebecca Walker Sands, who I saw walking around Friday afternoon, and I mentioned that to her. She's like, oh my god, amen, hallelujah. I paraphrase. I don't think she said hallelujah. But she was stoked to hear that. Because so many of you predominantly are going to be consuming journals and trying to understand what the, re what the research is saying. And if you know what a p-value is, oh, that's fantastic. One of your take-home questions, actually, is I Googled what is a p-value, and the very first answer on the very first link is wrong. So your job is to explain why it's wrong and then answer it correctly. Mm. So the person, Pam Purdue, that's what the tag name is on the, uh, on the response, what are those wiki answers, you know, wiki answers? What is a p-value? I believe her answer is, is the chance of null hypothesis correct? Wrong! False! <laughs> your job is to answer it correctly. Tell, tell why she's wrong and also answer it correctly. So that's one of those things. I mean, that's, I, that's an example of something that sounds legit. The chance of null hypothesis is correct. That sounds completely legitimate. It's also completely wrong. So your job is to get in there and figure out why. Cool? And that's not due till next Thursday, Thursday right? right? Yeah. Right. Yes, Thursday. Yes. So you got plenty of time. And ask questions. If the Excel is acting up, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You have to set up Excel like you did on the last exam for iterative because you're holding down F9 and letting the distribution grow like you did on the last exam. Same exact idea. So you can refer back to that one to set it up. It should already be set up if you set it up last time. It should just stay that way. But you guys look terrified all of a sudden. You okay? <laughs> it's going to be yeah. fine. Well, I'm, still, well, I'm not terrified. I'm exhausted, maybe. I'm kind of scared. I'm scared. Okay. So any golf questions? Any golf? Uh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Me, go ahead. Let's fire the thing up. Let's go up to the top here. Um, number E3. E3? Let's take a peek at it. Goth. Oh, yeah, backing up real quick. We're not going to get to this. I don't want to rush to get that in. That seems kind of dumb. So this is going to be your, this is basically your, your last exam right there. That's your last exam. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just those four sessions. I, I mentioned five tests. That's because this guy right here actually has two different tests in it, two Zs and two Ts. So, that counts as two different tests because they are two different tests, but they're very, very similar in their in their impact. Uh, okay, so Goth was E three, right, Brady? Yeah. Which one's this? E three. This is the which proportions got bigger, which got smaller, which oh, so this is actually this is actually a good question. We have to go through and run the individual the individual tests, although although did it make sense down to that point? Like, did all this, the post hoc testing make sense as far as individually testing each one? 
So for example, we got, got they got get better, not change, get worse, and unknown. And then we've got these individual p-values. And the idea is, so, okay, back up, back up, rewind. The point of this exercise is to take you into the next logical place. When you're testing more than two proportions and you get a small p-value running off, what does that mean? In words, or however you want to say it, symbols, interpreter dance. But what does a small p value what does a small p value mean after a goff, a goodness of fit test? Something changed. Good, good. Give it to me a little more. I love that. I love that, Richard. Give it a little more contextually. Beth? That one we were saying it was at least off. At least one. Is Perfect. Right. At least one of the proportions that you were expecting to hold is not holding. <laughs> so your job is to go back in and figure out which ones. One parentheses s could be more than one. Could just be one. Might be all of them. Could be all of them, but it, it, it might be. It's, probably, it's at least one. That's all we know. So, for example, the M&Ms. Oh, crap. I forgot to bring that letter. You write that down. I want you guys to sign it. We can mail it off. I just got the most recent rejection letter back from Mars. <laughs> so, you got to make sure you get the next one. Next turn. <laughs> yeah. Got to get that wall of rejection. Don't forget to include your uh, link to YouTube. Oh, don't worry. Oh, that's a very, I, I don't do that usually. Good. That way when they ignore the letter, they ignore the link too. Yep. <laughs> See that you're giving them advertising. Excellent. <laughs> Actually, I hope they never fix it. I hope they never do, because if they fix it, then we'll, we, we'll get a big p-value and then they get to the point of the letter. So I'm actually, nah, Skittles is too boring because they're all 20%. That's what's so boring. I, excuse me, I don't use Skittles. It's 20, 20, 20, 20. I feel like the Ramones right there. I want to be sedated. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, that, that's the... Uh, that's the problem with skills. That's why I like evidence because they're a little bit different. So what if you take away? I don't. I hope I don't. That's why I'm glad they actually don't. It's, it's like this great little dance we play. <laughs> dance we dance. Anyway, so apparently, whatever we're testing here, it looks like we have, looks like we have a survey, and we we're testing to see if there was a difference. I'm assuming from what it was before to what it is now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Looks like we sampled 1,521 people. Uh, let me back up here real quick. Sean, this postdoc stuff seems like more work. I think still is the point. Yes, yes, yes. Let's walk through. Got a small p value. Do I mention this? What, what test do we do? Which one are we looking at? Oh, number 10. Okay. Does anybody have a book? Can you tell me, refresh my memory, what number 10 is? Because I don't remember what that is. And I gave a book away weeks ago, and it's gone somewhere. If one of you guys have it, that's what we'll do. I copied the answers in, but I'm, oh, why don't I? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would, except we're not going to use this book after this term. So, I don't know if I'm doing anything. So, and I don't know, I'll have an open source PDF. I'll just go and click on it. Go through. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you go ahead if you don't mind. Yeah. I was going to put my phone in. Chapter 12. Ah, page 250 something or other? 250 to 253. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in 250 to 253, number 10. Well, thanks. That's all. Well, well and that's okay. All I really need is the, is the context. Okay, it's a poll. American skittish over health care changes. Okay, so originally, the percentages were 22, 35, 38, and 5, which I actually you can see down here, friends. These were the original percentages in the poll done, looks like October 21st, 2009. 22% thought it was getting better, 35 said no change, 38 said get worse, and 5% said unknown. The new numbers came in a month later to see if anything changed. And the new numbers are 380 said get better, the same number said nothing's changing. 700 said it's going to get worse, and 61 said they have uh, an unknown or no opinion or something along that. Technically, that's all I wanted to know. I wanted to know what the context was in those words. So the question is, did any change? Well, when you ran the GOF to test to see if all the proportions were still in line with these four right here, the 22, 35, 38, and 5%, you got <coughs> basically a p-value is equal to zero because you had a chi-square test statistic of 78.5. Let me fire up the chi-square generator again real quick so you can see why we got a small p-value. Because I, I, I think that one thing the TI doesn't do is draw a pretty good image of the graph, and that's, I, I have to work on that over the summer. But if you look at the chi-square graph, here he is. 
with four categories. There's our curve, four categories. Here's our, here's our test statistic out here, 78.5, right? There's your p value. Point. Oh, 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 Six, which is essentially zero. Right, essentially zero. So that if you're way out here on the curve, you should be somewhere in here, somewhere in here, assuming that things are distributed in those four percentages. But you're not. You're way out here, which means there's some other curve you're on. And the question is not that I want to find that curve. But just can we identify which proportion or proportions threw us off of that curve? That's, that's the idea of a post hoc test. Fair enough so far? Ish? Getting there? Maybe. Okay. So, what you have to kind of do, and I'm sorry I'm going through like E1 and E2 as well, because yeah. you kind of have to see e, the point of E2 to do E3 properly. Cool. Awesome. So, the point of E1 is that this will allow you to go one step deeper and say, not only is at least one of the proportions off, here are the ones that appear to be off. Is it, does that make sense? So for the M&Ms, we said, yes, the color proportions are not following the proportions that m &M says they are. And then we stop there, but we don't know which colors. We just know that something is off. We don't know which or how many. Post hoc lets you go deeper and actually tell you which ones are, which ones have changed. Does that kind of make sense? Fair enough, Ish? Okay. Now, the way we're gonna do it is you're gonna actually go back into the data and test the data points individually. At which point you all go, what? Why didn't we just do that at the beginning? Because we were reducing our confidence. Because you reduce confidence when you do that. When you run them individually, you reduce confidence off the bat by doing that. Okay? So you have to correct the confidence and or, and or significance, however you depend on looking at it, by this factor down here which is called a bump rony adjusted post hoc significance level. So that's five times fast. Yeah. So basically, what you do is you take your significance that you want, which is the 5%, and divide it by the number of categories. That's your new significance level you're testing at. So you know how we always use 5% as the, as, the, as the cutoff? You have to test at a higher, if you will, or a lower significance, a higher confidence level to, uh, to make up for, that, for that, that problem Karen mentioned right there. So you do the test exactly the same way, but you just test at a different p, a different different p value cutoff, if you will. So instead of p being smaller than five percent, it now has to be smaller than one point two five percent. That's it. That takes care of the reduced confidence. The Goff says something's up. This takes care of the reduced confidence. We're happy. Well, ish or content. You don't look happy. I'm scared. Beth, go ahead. What you're saying is this is how we tell which one. Yes, ma'am. And we're about to see. We're about to see. Yes. We're about to see. So now we know we're going to compare to 1.25%. Okay, ba boom, ba boom. Here we go. Here are the results of testing all four of them individually. Get better. Came in at a p value of 0 0.0033. Is that less than 0 0.0125? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so something changed there. We'll come back to that. So we know that one's different. We know this one's different than it was before. We'll come back to that. How about this guy here? This is uh, not change. Came in at a p value of zero. Yeah. Natalie, what are you thinking? The end is 1512 and it's supposed to be 1521. Oh, yeah. I probably. Yeah. Oh, I put the wrong. That's okay. I doubt very much that's good. Thank you for noticing that. I didn't notice that myself. This has been up for about a year and a half now. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I will fix that and re upload images. It, I'm guessing it won't change the results. It'll only be off by nine. It's a little bit, it's a little bit off. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for noticing that, Natalie. I, like I said, a year and a half, I've never caught that. So. That too. Got one. 15, is, is, tw is 15, 21 the correct number to use? It's, it's at the top end. Right, that doesn't yeah. match. That's assuming I typed it correctly, Mike. <laughs> so 1521 is the right one? Yes. Well, then it changes the book. Yeah, because the problem is this is based on the problem in the book. I, I tend to do that. I cannibalize problems that are right there. I'm like, oh, why'd they stop here? Let's go further. And then I screw up. But whatever. It's cool. So did something change here? Yeah. Yes. So not changed. Changed. Uh, how about get worse? Yeah. yeah. Yes. How about unknown? No. 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 So unknown is essentially still at the same percentage it was. It's five percent, arguably five percent, nominally five percent, plus or minus five percent. So now the question in E three was, and I, I put the I put the conclusions down here for you. There you go. Here 
you go. So get better, not change, get worse and unknown. There's our, there's our four results. We do have a difference in the proportions of get better, not change, and get worse for all of those bad boys. Unknowns stay the same. So Nee's question is, how about which way they change? Because all you tested for, if you look at the screen setups up here, you were just testing for a difference in each case. You were only testing for a difference, not for a direction. Now here's a question. If there was a significant difference, will there be a significant change in one direction or the other? There has to be, right, Darla? There has to be. And this is a little hard to see. But for example, right here, this is a two-tail test, which makes the p-value 8.5%. If you remove one of the tails, what does the p-value become? Four. Four. Yes, half of it. It gets smaller, correct? Which means that these p-values, if we remove one of the tails, they were significant, they're still going to be significant by removing one of the tails. You see what I'm getting at there? If you can show significance with two tails, it's guaranteed to be significant with one. The converse is not true. The converse is not true. Because you, if you say your p-value is 4% with one tail, if you double that, it becomes 8%, which trips over the 5% line. But as long as you go from two to one tail, there was a whole more question back about one or two problem sets that actually asked this. Some statisticians, all they ever run is two tail tests because it's harder to get a small p-value because you're always working with twice the area. But since we now have small p-values, we can decide which ones went up and which ones went down. How can we decide that? Z. Yes, Richard, look at the Z's. For example, this test is, this is why I have you guys write these down all the time. It's not because of, well, a little bit faster. <laughs> but really, it's for interpretation. Z, 2.9. 2.9 what? I love asking this in week 10. 2.9 standard deviations. And it's positive, away from the mean. I like that too, whoever, whoever just said that. That's great. Christian, like this, you. 2.9, positive or negative? Positive. positive. So it's this way, which means the percentage that said, I forget what this one was, get better is higher than it was a month ago. It went up. And you could actually calculate the percentage if you wanted to by taking whatever this was. I forget the numbers now. Let me back up a little bit. Nee, I'm probably not answering your question. I apologize. It took this long. It was at 22%, eh? now it's at 380 over 1512, which is closer to uh, 26, maybe 27%. I'm not exactly sure what that would be as it's down to a decimal, but it's significantly higher. Fairish? Fairish? Ish? Okay, not change, okay? Negative eight, standard deviations. We're over on this curve essentially, right? We're over here. So what happened to the not change percentage? It's way less. It was at 35. Now we're, again, we're at 380 over 15, 12. So essentially 27% again, which is a drop down from 35, where 27 was a move up from 22. Does that make sense? So these two were very different. They come towards each other now, and they're essentially the same. Sampling-wise, plus or minus might be different, but, but they're essentially the same statistically. Fair enough? And last but not least, get worse. 6.6, positive, 6.6. .6. So the percentage that said get worse is way bigger. It used to be 38. What's it closer to now? What's it closer to now? Ish, closer to 50%. Look, 700 over 1512 is essentially a little bit under, 48 maybe, but still way bigger than it was at 38. That's all we're getting at. It's a way to go in there and say, here's which ones change. And you can go even further if you find it. If you say, here's how they change. You're looking exceptionally panicky. Because this is a lot of work, yes? Yeah. For next week on the exam in class, I won't have you go through all of this. You'll just finish the goth question like in your homework. You'll finish the goth question in your homework and be done. You'll say at least once they're burnt, if it is. It might not be, it might be a big p-value. And just put your hands up and go, I'm done. The goth, why did I have you do this? To understand. In it. case you actually have to use it something. T textbooks don't cover this. I mean, it's not in, it's not even mentioned in your textbook, but in case you have to use this in your field, this is a way to go in and find the ones that are different, yeah? But don't panic about it. It's something you're still panicking about next week. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it next week. I gotta think, I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about you. Beth. Since you named the, the program you put in our PR. Goff. Goff. Yes, ma'am. Is the goodness of Goodness of fit, yes, ma'am. Now, is that what the rest of the world calls Goodness of fit, yeah. They're called okay. goodness of fit tests. Chi-square okay. goodness of fit tests. Okay. Some of the newer TIs, if you look in the tests menu, 
Some of the newer TIs actually have a Goff test. That's really good. Would that be the chi? Chi square goodness of fit. Yep. Um, so if you go to oh crap, hang on, break with. If you go to stat test, some of the newer 83s and 84s actually have down low a chi square Goff test. But they're exactly a lot don't, which is why I wrote the program so that those who don't could have one. Um, I don't particularly like theirs because it asks you for one more piece of data that's dumb. It asks you to put in degrees of freedom, which any competent computer programmer could pull from the data. I'm going to read you something. Thank you. Well, yeah. Cool. So that's that's what we're going to do with E3. Does that make sense? Yes, please, Lizzie. My golf program asks for degrees of freedom. It does, yes, ma'am. So you put in three for this one. Okay. It's one. So yours is basically hardwired. Use the 89, correct? Yeah. Yours is hardwired like the, like the 84. Um, you put in one less than how many categories? Oh, okay. So three for you. Okay. Three for you. M and M's was five. iPod was nine. Uh, one less than number of categories, pretty okay. much in every case. But don't. I understand how tediously long this is. I totally get that. And I, I was. It's the kind of thing I would ever put in a time situation. Right? I would never put it in a time situation. It's too tedious for a time situation. But at the same time, it's important to know and understand what to do in case you get to that. I used to have a student at 244 who came back to me three months after and said, thank you for God. I use it all the time in my, she's a, she's a social worker in, in uh, South Central Oregon. And she actually uses it constantly when she's pulling percentages from the region she works in. And she has to use the GOP all the time to find the differences. So again, it's for, that, it's for those people that might have to use this down. You have a reference. It'll always be online. You can always use it. It's not going anywhere. So just so you understand how to process it. That's yeah, I'm, I'm for understanding. I mean, the test is important-ish, kind of. But I'm more for understanding. So, Nee, makes sense? Does that come to E3 make sense now, how we identified each one? Yeah. Basically, it, it's one of those things where you get lost because of the new stuff and you forget the old stuff. That tells you it's up three standard deviations. That means it's higher. It's down eight standard deviations. That means it's lower. It's up almost seven standard deviations. That means it's higher. This tells us it's down 1.7 standard deviations, which is down, but not significantly now. That's all that tells us. Is that fairish? Yeah. Fairish. Fish. It's week 10. It's fairish. This <laughs> make turn me over, damn it. <laughs> yes, ish. Yeah. Good. So as long as you can, basically, you're done. You're done once you, on, for next week, if you're thinking about next week, when you run GOP and you get the test stat and the p-value and you write your conclusion, you're, you're, you're done. I think there's a quiz due for this week that runs a GOP, I believe. It's a game I used to play in my classes, pulling blocks out of a bag. Mm -hmm. That's a good example of, of, I don't think I asked you for post-hoc testing on that quiz. I don't think. Do I? No. I don't. Right. That's, that's a good example of like an exam question for next week. Although there's an extra credit on that quest, quiz, I think. Yeah. yeah. Figure out how many blue blocks are in the bag. That's a good one. <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. Give it a shot. Cool? Yeah? No? <laughs> no. Say you much. I'm sorry. Oh, it's Richard. I'm sorry. Yes? So all we've got to chit chat about. Let's take five, though. You got that glazed look early today. Yes. <laughs> Let's take five and then run the last test you're going to run, which is called an ANOVA. And we'll, we'll do that.